heart of hearts as I see you, the people of God, is you just need to live life. And I want you to be more effective people, not just that you go and get straight A's. God bless you. I know that we got a lot of good students in here. But you know, or in your life, that you are just doing well. But you know what? When you communicate, it's going to help you in every facet of your life. It, some of you guys right now, uh, you, you, can you imagine if you can't go up to a girl and tell her you like her, you'll never know. <laughs> right, ladies? And what about uh, what ladies? If you don't have to respond to a guy when he comes and asks you out for a date or going to the prom or whatever it is, what's gonna happen? what are some skills that we know? How are you going to talk to your coworkers at work? What are you going to say to your boss? How are, what kind of communication skills do we need to get along and improve our lives in this world? So we've got so much to, to cover. These, these are critical, critical lessons on top of the importance of sharing the gospel. Okay. So we're, 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 we're sharing all of this stuff. You know, the reason why they, they built schools, well, they were founded by Christians in this country, is so that they would be educated enough to read the Bible. Why we're doing this, we're inserting this, this course here, this mini course on conversations, is so that you would be able to better all of your relationships with God, with your loved one, maybe potentially your, your marriage partner, and with your neighbor and those people that don't know God, how significant this is. All right, we're going to practice all this. You guys have an opportunity to do this, this quirky things. You guys have any groups? Any, any, anybody want to share the quirkiness in their group? What common, quirky, weird thing out of your three people you guys find? Anybody? Just shout it out. What do you guys got? What quirky, crazy stuff have you guys, three people together? Okay, this was a little icebreaker for you guys. Get you to really connect with one another. We're going to pray right now before we start that God would indeed lead us in our time to improve in our conversational life skill. Let us pray. Father, you sent your son into this word, world, and he is the word, the word, the great Logos. And how great and infinite you are, and yet you still had to find a way to communicate with us in a level that we understand and that's why it's so significant that we look at communication, that we look at how we're able to share the very most important things about us, that we have found your grace and your love, that we're forgiven people, that we're not just living for self, we're living for eternity, we're living for you. Help us, God, to deepen our conversation for the sake of Christ. And yes, even in our quality of life as a human being here on planet Earth and beyond. So guide us. Equip us, move us, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. All right, we are communicating all the time. You cannot help but communicate. We need to come to a place where we just say, how do we effectively have good conversations? Studies have been done over and over again about conversations, and it's this. The number one thing that gives life meaning for people is this, deep and loving relationships. That's not on your handout, you can write it down. Deep and loving relationships. We all desire that. We all want that. But how do you get there? It doesn't happen automatically. Sometimes it happens by accident, and we'll just say, well, this is great. But how did it happen? And when, you, when the people that do this, and they, these, these studies about social sciences, about how we get to a place of deep and loving conversations, it's actually not that hard to understand. So several things that we're going to talk about, some of the basic things about communications of developing deep and loving conversations and relationships is what we're about in these next few weeks together. Today we're going to start out by talking about the four mindsets of, you guessed it, a loving conversation. A loving conversation. Think back just real quickly about the last time you had a really great conversation, deep conversation. You really felt loved. You felt connected. You felt supported. You felt encouraged. What was that like? You're, it's probably going to end up on this list of four things. Okay? You're probably going to see it. I want to start out with the most important. There are four, but I would say, and actually even the scientists would say, as we study this, would say that this first one, if you had to give a disproportionate amount of energy to, it's this one. This is what people are calling the secret sauce of conversation. 
the secret sauce, and that is this. Let's go to number one. Mindset number one, be curious. Be curious. Praise God. You know what? I, I was a science major. And the, the best thing, the harder part about being a good a scientist is you've got to ask a lot of questions. Who, what, where, why, how? We just keep asking questions. Question after. You've got to be curious. You've got to be curious. And when you're curious about people, they felt now you, you focus on that. You, and they said, tell me more about that. I had a conversation this week with I named Justin. Justin is a, is a landscaper, and he has a company of three, uh, three people, two trucks, and he's the, one, he's the guy that goes to all the car dealerships and he, he, he power washes the cars out in the morning before you and I get there to buy a car early in the morning at 9 a.m. His job, he says he gets up at 3.30 in the morning. He'll get to there and he starts power washing around 6, 5.30 to 6. And he'll finish right, be, at, right before the dealership opens. All spick and span. He, has, he does car dealerships up and down this Bay Area right here. Like this company of, of just three people. Fascinating stuff. I just keep asking questions. Now, at times, it seems like he was a little quiet, but didn't take long. You're going to discover this. Two, three questions into this. Next thing you know, he was talking more than an hour and 15 minutes. Okay? That's exciting. But here's the thing. If you're not curious, you think, oh, that's boring. I didn't get the chance to say anything. Well, how come he talked for an hour and 15? That was a waste of my time. No, we have to see people as very valuable. We get the gift of learning about them. So curiosity is so important. Curiosity is what we're going to call it, but the scientific term is interpersonal curiosity. So there you got the casual term, and then you got the, you know, the sociological study term. Interpersonal curiosity. Just real quickly, there's three tips after each one. I don't need to even go through them, but you can read it for yourself. And they're gonna, well, actually, I'll go through them real quickly. Number one, you can begin a conversation by, I'm curious, tell me about this. All I had to say was, wow, Justin, I'm really curious about that. How does it work that you can do 300 cars, clean 300 cars in a lot? He goes, oh, literally split. Let me tell you how my day goes. Wow. Off he goes. Just be curious, right? Second question. Make a list of people in your life you'd like to grow closer to. What are some things you'd like to know about them? Be curious. Be like an inspector. Not to once like to, to find balls of them, but, but you're finding jewels. You're finding gems. You're finding treasure, right? Third one. Attempt to ask a question rooted in curiosity to every single person you encounter, even strangers, and see the effect it has on other people. I tell you, it's still so fun. I just get an opportunity. I had another conversation with this, with this couple about movies. I just it started coming up. I heard this, over, a comment, uh, overheard this conversation. I said, oh, well, I don't know about that movie. That sounds like a great movie. Next thing you know, we were in this conversation about movies for another hour. <laughs> it was a great time. So you see, people are willing to share if we show curiosity. Can I just stop here and say one thing? I grew up seeing my grandfather had a wealth of information, went through all these things. He was, a, he was a school principal in China and all this, had all this experience. And you know what? Every time we got together for a family dinner and stuff, he was nearly quiet the whole time. And I thought it was a sad, sad deal. Because I go, what is happening? And as I, I was thinking about this as I was a little kid, I was going, because we're just so busy with something else, but he's got this wealth of information that after a while, he's not going to be with us. It's gone. We won't know about what it was like when he was growing up, when we went through all of these struggles and everything like that. And you know what? He's not with us anymore. But that wealth of information just went with him. How much better if we sat at his feet? Just, just ask some quick questions. Mindset number two. I've got to keep going. Believe the best. If you, if you have stereotypes about people, go, ooh, that person looks like a bad person. Like, ooh, man, man, I could be talking to the next axe murderer, whatever. It's going to be very difficult. But no judgment. It's simply let them explain to you. Believe the best. The, 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 the term here is positive regard. Positive regard. So in positive regard, try to recall or imagine a person who loves you unconditionally. Picture how his or her face lights up when, you start, when they talk to you. Try to model this behavior to others. I got several people that were so loving that built me up, poured into me. Great. They become great models for me to, to treat others. So you get in a conversation like this. I'm so happy to be talking with you. How do people know you're happy to talk with them unless you tell them? I really enjoy connecting with you. And I, I, I discovered it worked in reverse too. I recently got a comment like this and I went, wow, really? And 
And even though I'm studying and preparing all this stuff for you guys, I'm just when I get a comment like that, I go, wow. And all of a sudden, my estimation of that person, like, man, okay, let's keep talking. And off we go. Number three, make a list of the people in your life you care most about. Write down several things you admire and respect about them. This will foster a mindset, mindset of what? Positive regard. So often, I don't know what it is, but we're built-in critics. We can see the speck on the masterpiece, right? We, we, we point out the speck on the masterpiece without any curiosity or positive regard on the masterpiece itself. So we miss out on the masterpiece because we're so focused on the dot on the masterpiece. Guess what? Every person is a masterpiece, a work of art by God, made in the image of God. And sometimes we'll, go look, we'll look at the little speck over here. And what we're doing is oh, we're missing the great work of God and what he's doing when we focus on this little tiny thing on the side. Okay, mindset number three, express concern. That's the word for investment. Sounds familiar? Why? It sounds like something that could be in our vision statement. Right? Express concern. How do you know a person is concerned if they don't say it? How do they know you're concerned if you don't say it? Sometimes we just don't say it. So we need to consider someone else's success. i got to tell you, one of the hardest things for me is when you, when you give good news and people aren't excited. That's the hardest thing for me. But you, know what, you, you're, you're, you as well. Because you're likely you're not going to say anything else after that. But if people are excited for you, and here's the secret, if they can connect their success to your success, you, you, you say more. Uh, there's people that call me up and say, man, I'm praying for you. Because if you do well, I'm doing well. And you know, for those people, man, you want to share your life, you want to continue to talk, right? So express concern is so important. Secondly, find out what people in your life are concerned about. See, watch it. So much of this is helping us focus outward. What I discover of people is a lot of people like to talk about what they're doing, but when you focus outward to others, it's just a rare deal. It's how you really concerned, and they'll just share more. And we have to give them prompts to share more. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about that. Or how did you, why is it that this is so exciting for you? Right? So uh, there's more prompts that you can use. Number three, discover what people in your life are celebrating or what good news they have. By the way, I shared with you guys, this is, we shared with this class last week. There was a possibility our youngest daughter was going to get engaged in Hawaii. Well, guess what? She got engaged in Hawaii. <laughs> Woo! See that applause? For those of you who applause, I'm like, I'm ready to share more. The guys, if some guys they say, oh, that's, that's no news. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Go back to my shell and share those updates with myself later. <laughs> All right. But when we, we're excited for each other, what happens? Get to share more. All right. Mindset number four, share your life. Now, here's the other tricky part. Share your life. There are some people I know that go through some of these mindsets, but what happens is they don't like sharing about themselves. They're guarded. It's kind of like, I want to know everything about you, but I'm not going to tell you anything about me. And I find that when you have an unequal type of conversation, it's not really that much fun. Because after a while, it's like, oh, wait a second. I'm being so revealing. The person's not saying anything. This is, this is very uncomfortable. So what we've got to be careful about is we also have to share our lives. So there's appropriate times. And there's, there's something called the two-minute rule. Well, if you let a person talk about two minutes, there's a pause. It's a review, and you go, yeah, that reminds me of, in my life, of what you give a, a parallel type of thing, and you go back and forth like that. That's how you do it. So the, the technical sociological term here is mutual sharing. Think of how you relate to a person's situation. In conversation, you can find common ground with others after they've had ample time to share. Do you like that movie? Me too. You know what the lady said to me? After we started, husband and wife, lady comes in and goes, wow, it sounds like we have the same taste in movies. What are the movies you would recommend? Well, she gave me a chance to talk. Then I said, what do you recommend? All of a sudden, she gave me all these quirky names I haven't heard of. Okay, I'll, I said, I came back and told Andrew, we've got to find out about those weird movies that the lady knows to talk about. So what happens is, just by that question, she gave me an opportunity to share, and all of a sudden, there's a connection. Consider topics about you, such as, here's the three things. Watch this. Three things you're struggling with. Three things you're celebrating. And three of Think about that. Think about that. Is that cool? If we were to go out right there, we wouldn't. We wouldn't. We could not end this class before the end of the day if we really did that for everybody. Because we have so much to talk about. The things you're struggling with, the things that you're celebrating, the upcoming decisions that need to be made. There's so 
how much we can share. And every one of those things, topics that we bring up, have follow-up questions after question after questions about that that will lead to other stuff. It's so exciting. And then, use the six conversations, which is the course name here, and also by the book name as well, to think of categories that respond to and connecting to others. Later on, I'll give you a little preview about the six, uh, six categories. The six categories of six conversations parallel the six parts of being human. Okay? So there's the social, emotional, physical, cognitive, volitional, and spiritual. Okay? We'll, we'll talk all about that later. Don't, have, don't worry about it. You're going to get the whole list. So what happens is when you ask somebody about something, you can mentally go through that list of six and see what they're, they're, they're thinking about, what concerns them. Is it a social issue? Most people I know, as I'm getting older, we relate a lot on that physical level. I'm not talking about hugs and touches and stuff like that. I'm talking about, man, my back hurts. <laughs> I couldn't sleep last night, right? Man, my medication is going crazy. I've got blood pressure up to here, all kinds of stuff, right? So what happens is we're relating on the physical level, right? And that becomes a very easy way for conversation. For me, the physical has been my bread and butter conversation that leads into the spiritual conversation. Because I can say, look, this body is breaking down, but guess what? Guess what? We got a new one coming, right? So it's great. Now, I'm going to stop right here, and um, we're going to do a question right now for you guys, just on those four mindsets. So we've got a question coming up. Do we got one coming up? Okay. Um, the question we're going to ask, what is the question we have? Go ahead to assignment number, class training reps number one. So you're going to practice as you guys pair up. Begin a conversation with these words. I'm so curious. Tell me about. Okay. So you're just you're just going to pair up, and again, you could talk, you ask anybody about anything you'd have, you'd want to, and see if you can't fo ask follow-up questions and continuation, and really be interested in the person. Again, all these things that we we've, we've been taught before help. Use good eye contact. Lean forward. Be interested. Put away your cell phone, right? Don't look away. Give the person the focus and attention. Don't be distracted by other stuff. And then when it's your turn to answer, same thing. You get that person will be able then to give you that attention while you speak. And when you speak, when you do revealing things, by the way, I haven't shared with you this. There's a, there's a New York Times article that's put out, 30 questions. If a, question, if a couple went through the 30, 30 questions, they have a good chance to fall in love. <laughs> Crazy. Again, I told you it would affect your relationship because they found that the level of revealing that you have in these, and that connection fosters the sense of being loved. And so when you share these things, it's like, wow, this person really understands me. I think I'm falling in love. Anyway, anyway, go ahead and feel a few minutes right now. Be curious about each other, whatever subject you guys share about. Okay. Fantastic. Well, we're going to continue now. This is something that is not necessarily, it's hard to practice, but it's just something we need to know. We're going to talk today about, right, also about the three goals of a conversation. You ever think about why? What is the goal of a conversation? Why do we talk to people? And if we keep these three goals in mind, it's going to help us. Okay? Somebody can probably guess. First thing that we're going to take a look at is to mutually encourage. Now, this sounds simple because as Christians, we talk about mutual encouragement all the time. But it's something that we, we need to. Sometimes in our conversations, especially if we're, I'm thinking about how I parented throughout the years, it wasn't necessarily to encourage. Because I wanted to make sure they did their chores. Or I wanted to make sure they were on something. Right? So, but one of the, one of the uh, key goals for us is to mutually encourage. Now, we don't state this up front. Uh, it's one of those things. It's easy to forget and probably won't happen. But if we were to say, can you imagine how it changes your conversation just by no, just by stating that? One of the goals of conversation is mutually encourage. Now notice that it's not just for you to encourage the other person, but it's to mutually encourage. So you have to give people an opportunity to encourage you. Uh, some of you are natural encouragers. And some of you, uh, it's hard uh, to receive encouragement. We have to have opportunity for that. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Three ways that we can do this. <clears throat> Remind them that they are not alone. You are with them and so is the Holy Spirit. How many times has this saved me when I don't know some, how, what to say in a difficult situation? 
good. I'm with you, though. I'm with you. But so it's not. It's not good. Okay. Number two, refocus their heart on God's care for them. Because sometimes they feel overwhelmed. Circumstances are too much. Right? Work is piling up. Or it could be at work, or it could be at school. Man, I got all these finals, got all these assignments. Focus back on God, as we talked about this morning, and in God's care. Third, complement their strengths, acts of service, and spiritual gifts. It's already they've done all this. They've already done so much. Compliment them on that. Again, we don't want to be the ones that, because we look at a great masterpiece, that we can point out the spec. Right? Maybe they can do that. But it's something else to appreciate. Are you perfect? No. But you're a work in progress. And look at the progress God has done. Right? So that's how we encourage one another. Goal number two is to aid personal growth. To aid personal growth. Again, we don't state it. Sometimes we don't, we don't realize it. It's like, come on. We're just talking. Why is there a goal to anything? Well, because there is or should be to conversation. Right? To mutually encourage and now for personal growth. Philippians 2, 2021, I have no one like him who will be genuinely anxious for your welfare. That's a rare individual. They all look after their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. When you start caring for other people, you are a rare individual. Because the law of the jungle out here in the world is look out for number one. That's the number one rule of the jungle, right? So when you care for a person, you are unique. Now, you may not be so unique here in the church because, hey, we're all great. Praise the Lord for that. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But out there in the world, you're unique. How come you're not watching out for yourself? How come you're not selfish? Okay. Because personal aid, personal growth, and others. How, three ways we can do it. Ask others about their professional or personal goals. Create a project. Long-term dreams and conversations. Oh, especially when you ask about dreams. So much to think. This is a great story I read the other day about a guy that was, um, he worked for a garbage collection agency, and he just graduated from Harvard Law. So it's a great story. But, but to me, the story isn't that he graduated from Harvard Law. The story for me was when he was a garbage collector and who was encouraging him to go to school. And as you get that education, that is just too bad. Man. It's too bad. And that's where you and I can come in. When we encourage people, when they're, when they're, here, but you can protect by faith it could be someone else okay, in their personal growth. Think about how you can offer support by asking others how they like to be supported in their goals. People like to be supported in different ways. For example, uh, my friend who was running this crazy race, how, and his way of being supported, he even texted his group, you want to support me right now? I need you to order food for me. In 35 minutes, I'm going to run by this corner. Can the food be there when I run there? Did people volunteer? Yes, I order food for you. Boom, right there. So the guy runs there. Picks up his food. Some people just pray for me, sit by them, whatever it is. People, see, are, they like to be supported in different ways. That's why we need to ask. We can't say that as wonderful as cookies are, that cookies work for everybody. Right? We all love cookies. Though. <laughs> but some people just want to be supported in different ways. Right? Okay, number three. As you think about the six conversations, you can move through a series of questions based on the six dimensions of being human to help people enjoy progress. Again, don't worry about it because we haven't gotten to the whole list again. But again, they are social, emotional, physical, volitional, cognitive, and spiritual. Okay? So you use that as a checklist as you go through your conversation. The third goal of a conversation after mutually encouraged and uh, personal growth is to marvel. I love this because that's, that's the essence of what we talked about this morning. When we come before God, we marvel how great he is. And we can never marvel enough because he's an infinite being. We continue to marvel. I mean, people are awestruck already at a sunrise or sunset. Can you imagine we have a greater glimpse of God? That is why we marvel. Romans 11.33, oh, the depths of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. How can we marvel? Ask others when they last experience awe. Some people are like, uh, seen one sunrise, sunset, seen them all. <laughs> you know, 
man, come on. Right? Some people, they don't get awed over everything. But some you have to ask, it's been a while I've experienced awe. And some people, they, they're so good at this, they'll see awe in everything. I, I was walking the other day, and I saw this leaf. And I, I and I looked, and I could not believe, I couldn't move for the next 30 minutes, I was such awe. There are people like that. Okay? And so we just need to explore what brings people to awe. Okay? Where were they? What was happening? What did it feel like? Who was there? What happened next? Again, the curiosity blended in with this marveling. Okay? Number two, actively observe what's happening around you. You can ask, did you notice that? Or isn't that mysterious or, you know, curious? Number three, ask questions about what people are celebrating and what they are thankful for. These conversations lead to gratitude, which often leads to worship. You know, Andrew and I, we get into a lot of conversations with people about being grandparents. Well, guess what? That leads into a lot of awe. That leads into a lot of awe. Can you imagine that God is there? And this is how I describe it to people. I cannot believe that my kid has a kid. That's why I'm in awe. <laughs> All right? Okay? We want you to do something right now. Um, a little tricky, but I think, I think you guys are good. What you guys did with the curiosity question, now these three, we don't really have an opportunity to practice this. We can encourage, you know, uh, personal growth and marvel. However, keep in the back of your mind. We're going to have you go back and do a different conversation, and then you're going to transition into the three circles. Okay? There you go. So, incorporate your new conversational training with the three circles. Share the circles with one another. So you can start maybe with the last conversations you guys had. Pick out where, where you had, where, where you were just at before we ended. And then at that moment, use a transition into the three circles. God will give you wisdom how to do it. I don't, I have no, one, one size does not fit all here. God is going to give you wisdom to transition from what you've been uh, saying into the three circles. Okay, you guys got it? Okay, and give you plenty of time to do this. So practice, practice, practice. Get in those reps.